All right, Dirk, first and foremost, thank you uh, for joining us uh, on Go Open. It's pretty much a pioneering show in the world uh, with regards to open source technology. Thank you so much. Thanks. You don't need much of an introduction when it comes to the world of, uh, of techies and, you know, and people who are involved in the Internet and computers. You're pretty much a legend to them. But to the average man of the street, why have you affected their lives so very much? Right, so, so basically what we do is I belong to a, to a group of people, and I mean, there are over like a thousand in the Apache Software Foundation today. And what we like started doing some 10 years ago was basically build the sort of like first web servers. So whenever you go like on the internet and you go to a website uh, to book an airline ticket, to order a book, to look at a newspaper, and there's a piece of software there which sort of like hands you the page. So whenever your, your web browser, your computer is fetching a page, there's a piece of software which gives you that page on the side of the company. So it's, then these pieces of software are like located um, at, at newspaper companies, at airline companies. And that piece of software basically was written by a, by a group of people, myself included, uh, called the Apache Software Foundation. Now let's talk more about the Apache Software Foundation. Obviously uh, one of the earliest adopters of using an open source methodology. Um, how has it grown through that? Basically, at various places around the world, there were people, uh, myself included, who basically had a, were given a task by their bosses, by the institutions, to basically maintain a web server. In my case, basically, my boss wanted me to uh, make satellite pictures available, uh, weather pictures available to scientists. Uh, colleagues of mine in the U.S. were basically trying to make uh, newspapers available, magazines available, online shops available. And for quite a while, that actually worked really rather well. Except that at one point, uh, Rob McCool, uh, who was well, like one of the main developers at NCSA in America, left to form Netscape. And all of a sudden, there was this web server piece of software, which we all depended on for our jobs, uh, which our companies depended on, or in my case, the European Commission, the, the, the government and depended on, suddenly was left out there orphaned. So what started to happen was that we sort of like started to collaborate together to maintain that piece of software, to make it better, to basically make it needs sort of like our like daily demands. And that sort of like grew on and on and on. Uh, for actually quite a few years, and that basically became the Apache web server at one point. Um, since then, basically, and this was sort of like about like 10 years ago, since then um, it's no longer just a web server. It also, like, things were added, like the XML um, document language, um, basically bits to do e-commerce, uh, bits of code to, like, for example, make your bank system talk securely uh, to your credit card system. Um, so over time, so, like, we've grown from like, just like 10 people to like, over 1,000 uh, uh, today. How popular is the uh, Apache server? Um, so basically, so originally, like when we started, there was actually only the, the, the CERN server from the original. So the, the, the World Wide Web sort of like originated from, from CERN in Switzerland. And, and with it came a very like small server, which was only really suitable to be run on, on mainframes at that time. Um, since then, basically, we've sort of like grown from like being just a few percent to like well over like 70 percent of the, of the web servers in the world. Um, and so like even like the second biggest sort of like is about like 20 percent and 10 percent. And it's not just sort of like big in like terms of numbers. Uh, specifically, if you go to like the very large super sites like Yahoo, like Amazon, um, those are typically the sites which run the Apache web server. So if you actually look on the wire, if you look at like the number of pages being served by Apache or the, the amount of bandwidth Apache basically uses worldwide, uh, the numbers are even higher than that 70%. But now, what is the importance of standards when it comes to web servers and web software? Well, so the, the reason basically we, we probably grew that large was not because we are sort of like a, the, the very best or the fastest one or the most secure server, because there were other people sort of like, uh, like flying for that plane. It's just the fact that um, whenever you, you have like your web browser, you basically want to be able to talk to like anyone's web server. So when you actually go to like a, a South African newspaper or an English one or a German one or, or a, a Russian one, basically you want to make sure that your PC can actually fetch a page from there. So it's kind of like vitally important that everyone in the world sort of like speaks the same language, sort of like uses the same way of actually sort of like sending that web page from their sort of like corporate server down to your PC at home. So what really happened here is that um, Apache just sort of like happened to be one of the most standards compliant uh, server. And in fact, what was really happening was that while the standards were being formed, we were writing the code. And as we write the code, we sort of like said to the people writing the standards, well, actually, that's not really implementable. Can you kind of like change the standard a little bit this way or that way? So we sort of like ended up being sort of like the sort of like Tower of Babel or sort of the most neutral, uh, perhaps Esperanto of, of all those um, uh, servers. Um, and what sort of like happened is that, that now in the industry, um, if you actually want to talk to anyone else, you really want to sort of like use the same language, exactly the same implementation. And the easiest way you can do that is actually by using the same software. So we're sort of like popular by, yeah, the, the, the reason we're so popular basically was caused by the fact that um, everyone like tries to be as, as compatible as possible, and yeah, you're ultimately the most compatible if you all use the same software. 
Um, and that's sort of like what drives us. The fact that basically all these web servers around the internet are trying to be, trying to be interoperable with, with each other, trying to be sort of like speak the same language with each other. And that's why ultimately most of the larger sites are, are basically using the same software. If you want to like, like have an analogy, basically think of like the fax machine. There is no benefit to actually buy a fax machine which speaks like a different language because then you can't send fax to half the world. So ultimately everyone sort of like wants to have the same fax machine which will like send the same sort of pages. We are sort of like that bottom boring piece of software which yeah, basically everyone is, has the same software of. Uh, in the beginning your ability with Apache to host more than one site on a server was a big selling point with regards to Apache. Right, so what was happening in, in the early days of the, of, of the web is that um, the original servers, I mean, if they could handle like one connection, one, one client sort of like per minute, that was really a lot. And it was very hard to sort of like keep it because the web was growing very, very quickly. So what happened was that in, in the Apache community, you would only add those bits of codes, code you would really, really need. There was a lot of work to do. So you would typically only sort of choose those bits which directly sort of like you needed for your daily work. The result of that was that um, we sort of like in the Apache code typically added those things which most people like needed most desperately. And one of them was, for example, like the multi-hosting, be able to run multiple web servers off one expensive machine. Uh, because at that time it was, um, um, yeah, the cheap machines like Linux, et cetera, didn't really exist yet. So being able to run more, web, more than one web server off this sort of like very expensive machine was a, was a very important thing for, for basically our, uh, for ourselves essentially. So we're not like trying to, like, like a company, like trying to write for customers. We're really like creating the web server which we ourselves and our businesses needed. And somehow obviously like being driven so like by daily need means that your server sort of like really works very well in the real world. Um, as opposed to some of the commercial servers which are like basically they're more driven with a certain company or a certain segment of the market uh, in mind. Now one of the most amazing things about your company is that uh, the Apache software is available free for download. Yeah, so actually, like, I'll, I'll, I'll basically take some offense, like, basically for the word uh, company there. I mean, basically, the Apache Software Foundation is, is actually, like, two things. It's the Apache community, so this is kind of like a community, sort of like a quarter of a million people out there who, who work with the Apache server on a daily basis, who, who, who contribute code, who contribute patches, who, who help us refine and polish it. And, and on the other hand, there's the Apache Software Foundation, which is sort of like the legal, uh, the rather boring entity, which basically has the copyright on the code, which, which sort of like uh, maintains some servers, uh, which works with lawyers in the areas of patents and copyrights and trademarks. Um, so, so really, the Apache community as a whole is sort of like nothing more than just like a collection of people who, who need that web server on a, on a daily basis. How does the Apache organization generate income? There are basically like over a thousand developers which work on the Apache code on a daily basis. And they do that for all sorts of reasons. Um, some of them work for very large companies like IBM, Sun, Oracle, Microsoft. And some of them work just for like one person consulting outfits. And basically what they do together, they all sort of like have in their daily life, uh, they have a certain like need or desire. Um, there are also like a few like people who do it purely as a hobby, hobby, but those people are actually more rare. But what all these people sort of like have in common that they need this web technology, this internet technology, uh, in their daily life for their, their customers. And in each case, um, it's very important, it's vitally important for each of those people that whatever system they build for customer A can talk to whatever they build for customer B or what someone else builds for customer C. And ultimately, the easiest way to make sure that your systems talk to other people's systems, if you all sort of like use the same basic code, so if you make sure that the same bottom layer is the same, effectively if you all like use the same yeah, material, so to speak. And um, so that is why a lot of people, a lot of companies, basically let their employees uh, work on Apache code, uh, donate their time freely, because what that does, it basically builds a bottom layer of, of software, of software infrastructure, which basically works with other people's infrastructure. Essentially, you could look at it sort of like as the equivalent of like building a road system. And not, I mean, big companies are not going to build their own road system. Ultimately, you just want to, to connect to the, yeah, the world's road system. And that's what's happening in the software world as well. We basically spend time to basically build systems which are so common that other people can use it as well, which means that the system we built for our customers will work with all our customers as well. So basically our customers get a system which they can use to talk to their bank, to their insurance company, to their travel agents, and not, you don't sort of like get a balkanized world. You basically get like one world, which, well, well, one interconnected world, one internet. What is your whole feel with regards to open source and the future in that? There, there are a, a couple of answers possible to them. I think one thing is basically, I have to disappoint you there, or basically disappoint people who are looking in the Apache Software Foundation, sort of like for people on a mission who really want to evangelize open source in the world. Most people in the Apache Foundation um, are actually not quite like that. They're sort of like, they typically have like real jobs, real customers, um, who just have like demands. And they've found that the cheapest way or the, 